Now, let's take a look at the final text in the 2018 SATS reading paper. We have a story called Albion's Dream. If we look at the pictures, we can see an old bookshelf in the background, a picture of a cottage, and a boy holding something close to him who looks like he's being told off by a woman. What I like to do first is read the introduction and then look at the first question. So for the introduction, we have, in this text, Edward describes a strange incident that happened to him in an old farmhouse owned and inhabited by his uncle Jack. Question 30. Look at the first paragraph. What suggests that the inside of the old farmhouse was not very well looked after? Give two things. So let's read the first paragraph. There were rooms in the old farmhouse which I never saw used, and which smelt of a past that held extraordinary fascination for me. Little windows where unknown ancestors had sat on autumn evenings. Old leather-lined bookcases, with books that no one had handled for fifty years. Dust that no one had bothered to remove. So that's one reason why it's not very well looked after. It's dusty, and nobody has bothered to remove the dust. But we need two reasons, so let's keep on reading. Piles of candle wax in unlikely corners. So we have another reason. There are piles of candle wax that no one has bothered moving. But there are other possible answers for this question as well. If we keep reading, we have huge chamber pots and cracked basins, and everywhere a great generosity of space. So another possible reason why it's not looked after is that the basins are cracked. We might also have spotted the phrase smelt of a past in the first sentence, which possibly suggests it's not very well looked after, and the mark scheme says also accept reference to untouched books. So here, because it says also accept, it's not the best answer, but if we wrote that, we would still get the mark, as long as we'd written one of the other things as well because here we need to give two things to get one mark. Question 31. Look at the first two paragraphs. Which sentence below best describes the farmhouse? It had always been a lifeless place. No one ever went there by choice. It seemed stuck in the past. The outside was better looked after than the inside. We've read the first paragraph, so let's read the second. Outside there was a big lawn hardly walked on, flower beds hardly looked at, a vegetable garden which always produced too much, a vast horse chestnut with enough conkers to satisfy the needs of a whole village of boys, a second lawn that nobody ever sat on, and the poignant smells of animals and harvests of a bygone age. So, this paragraph talks about the outside of the house, but there's nothing to suggest that the outside was better looked after than the inside, so we can rule out this last statement. What about, it had always been a lifeless place? Well, it doesn't seem especially lively or exciting, but it doesn't mention what it used to be like, so we don't know if it has always been lifeless. And in any case, we want the sentence that best describes the farmhouse. So let's look at our other options first. No one ever went there by choice isn't really describing the farmhouse. And we're told that the chestnut tree produced enough conkers to satisfy the needs of a whole village of boys. So it's not completely deserted. Also, we know that Uncle Jack lives there, and the story hasn't told us that he had no other choice but to live there. So, we can rule out this statement here. Now, what about, it seemed stuck in the past? In the first paragraph, we're told that it smelt of a past. 
It also talks about books that no one had handled for 50 years, and it even mentions chamber pots, which are what were used before we had toilets that flushed. There definitely doesn't seem to be anything modern about the farmhouse, so we can say that it seemed stuck in the past. Perhaps it is lifeless as well, but we don't know that it's always been lifeless, and that's not what the first two paragraphs are emphasising. Whereas there are many examples given which suggests that it's stuck in the past. Question 32. Look at page 9. Find and copy one word which shows that M Sharp was in charge of the house. So let's start reading page 9. And because we have a find and copy question, we might want to underline any words that we think might possibly show that M Sharp was in charge, or words that we don't understand. There also lived with Jack an elderly spinster called M Sharp, who was the true guardian of the place and of the memories of the family. The farmhouse never got any cleaner under her care, but it never got any dirtier either. In fact, she was determined that nothing should change, and nothing did. Now, the question says look at page 9, but we have our answer in this paragraph. We know that the farmhouse was under her care, so we know that this paragraph is talking about her being in charge, but under her care isn't our answer, because that's a phrase, and we need just one word. The word that we need is guardian. The true guardian of the place means that she was in charge of the place. And you might have heard the word guardian before. Sometimes your teachers might use the phrase parents or guardians, and we use that to mean the people who are in charge of you at home. So, it makes sense that the word guardian shows that she was in charge. Question 33. Look at the second paragraph on page 9. Left to my own devices. This means that Edward had lost something, was confident with equipment, had a good imagination, or was free to do what he wanted. So let's read the second paragraph of page 9. There were times, as I grew older, when I went to stay with Jack on my own. I followed him on his work around the farm, or explored the empty rooms of the farmhouse. One day, I was 12 years old, it was raining, and Jack had taken the car on business. Left to my own devices, I visited the dogs and young chicks, watched M Sharp for a while as she prepared lunch, then made my way upstairs into the largest and most remote of the empty rooms, where one of the big bookcases had attracted my curiosity. So, what might left to my own devices mean? Well, we know that when he was left to his own devices, he did lots of different things, and we can guess that these are things that he chose to do. He went into the largest and most remote of the empty rooms, where one of the big bookcases had attracted his curiosity. So, he went there because he was curious, because he wanted to. So, left to my own devices means that Edward was free to do what he wanted. The other options don't make sense, because if we look at the things that he did, when he was left to his own devices, none of them suggest that he had lost something, was confident with equipment, or had a good imagination. In fact, one of the things he did was watch M Sharp make lunch. So that's hardly imaginative, but he did all of these things because he was free to do what he wanted. Question 34. When Edward was exploring the bookcase, he noticed something in the dark recesses of the shelf. Which of the following words is closest in meaning to recesses? Wood, spaces, contents, or design? We've not got to this part yet, 
so let's keep reading. I pulled out some of the books, glancing idly at the contents, and then, as I went to return one of them to its place, my eye was caught by something in the dark recesses of the shelf. I reached in and drew it out. It was a large red dice, but like no other dice I had ever seen. So, after he noticed something in the dark recesses of the shelf, he reached in. So, which of these options can someone reach into? You definitely can't reach into wood, and it doesn't make sense to say reached into contents or to design, but you can reach into spaces on a bookshelf, so that's our answer. Question 35. It dawned on me that the dice ought to belong to a game. Which of the following is closest in meaning to dawned on me, as it is used here? Began to worry me, became clear to me, made me feel better, or puzzled me? Let's go back to the text and keep reading. I took it to the window to inspect it. Each face had a symbol, a tower, a sword, a broken circle, something that looked like a pillar of stone. It was obvious that the dice had been fashioned by hand, for I could even make out the tiny blade marks, and none of the faces was precisely even. As I sat and puzzled over the symbols, it dawned on me that the dice ought to belong to a game of some kind. So I returned to the bookcase to make a thorough search. So what's happening here? He has studied the dice trying to figure it out, and then realised that the dice must belong to a game. So dawned on me means that he has suddenly realised something. That means we need to tick became clear to me, because it would make sense to say it became clear to me that the dice ought to belong to a game. There's nothing to suggest that it began to worry him or make him feel better. It doesn't mention him feeling worried or feeling good, only feeling curious. And he was only puzzled before he realised that the dice belonged to a game, not when he realised, not when it dawned on him. Question 36. How do you know that the bookcase had not been moved for a long time? Give two ways. So let's keep on reading. I looked behind every book and even used my hand to sweep out the shallow gap under the bottom shelf. There must have been ten years worth of assorted debris under there. So that's one way. There is old assorted debris under the bookcase. But if it had been moved more recently we wouldn't expect there to be anything underneath it. But we need to give two ways, so let's keep on reading. Finally, I began to edge the entire bookcase away from the wall. It was extremely heavy, and it took me some time to get it out far enough to look behind. There was a thick network of cobwebs and dust. I thought for a moment and plunged my hand in the gap. So here we have another way. There is a thick network of cobwebs and dust, meaning a lot of cobwebs and a lot of dust. And again, if it had been recently moved, we would expect it to be much cleaner. But if we read on, we'll find another possible answer here. There was something there, a flat box. It was covered with grime and falling apart. So there's our other possible answer. The bookshelf contains a grimy, so a dirty, box. The mark scheme says, also accept reference to the quotation of old leather-lined bookcases with books that no one had handled for 50 years. So, though this isn't the best answer, if you've given this answer along with one of the others, you'll still get the mark. Question 37. How can you tell that Edward was determined to find the game? Give one piece of evidence that shows his determination. If we finish the paragraph we were reading, 
We have, opening it, I found a board, counters, cards, and a number of little figures. I wiped away the dirt from the lid and made out the title. Albion's Dream, it said. So, Edward has found the game. But how do we know that he was determined to find it, that he really wanted to find it? We need to think about what we've just read, about what happened after he'd realised there must be a game, but before he'd found it. So, we can talk about him conducting a thorough search, or looking everywhere. For example, he's searching in every nook and cranny, he looked behind every single book, or we could quote from the text, it took me some time. Alternatively, we could explain that he was ignoring the dirt and the cobwebs behind the bookcases. For example, he even stuck his hand in all the dirt behind it, or we could quote, used my hand to sweep out the shallow gap. Or, we could talk about him moving the bookcase to find the game. For example, the bookcase was really heavy, but he still tried to move it. Question 38. Look at page 10. What impressions do you get of M sharp at this point in the extract? Give two impressions using evidence from the text to support your answer. So, before we can answer this question, we need to finish reading the text. At that moment, I heard M Sharp's voice coming up the stairs. Edward? Edward, she called. What on earth are you up to in there? The door opened. It took her a few seconds to work out what I was doing. Then she leapt towards me. Give me that immediately, Edward. I drew back cautiously. That box is mine. It's nothing to do with you. It belongs to me. She came forward with frightening intensity, her hand reaching out for the box. I hesitated. If it really was hers, I had no rights. But a stronger sense of justice broke out in me. I had found it by my own efforts. For the time being at least, it should be mine. So remember, your impression of someone is your opinion of them, what you think about them, your feelings towards them. So, there's evidence in the text to support the opinion that M Sharp is angry, scary or mean, bossy or demanding, or possessive. So, for the impression, you can use a word that describes someone's personality, and then, for evidence, you need to write something that has happened in the text to give you that opinion of them. And for your evidence, you can copy the part of the text which tells you. So, you can think about what the character says and what they do. For example, to support the impression that she is angry, we could quote what she says. So, give me that immediately, Edward or that box is mine, it's nothing to do with you, it belongs to me. Or we could quote what she does, so she leapt towards me, or she came forward with frightening intensity. Because they both show that the way that she moved towards him was quite aggressive and angry. You could pause the video here to look at the evidence that we have for the other three impressions, but there's also some more things that you could write for this question. So, you might get the impression that she was hiding something, or secretive, that she was defensive or concerned about the game, or that she was quick. And again, you can pause here to see what you could have written for the evidence. Now, to get three marks for this question, we need to have formed two of the correct impressions, and we need to have found the appropriate evidence for at least one of them. Question 39. In the last paragraph, Edward does not want to give the game to M Sharp. Give two reasons why he does not want to part with it. So, we need to give reasons. We need to infer why he does not want to part with the game why he wants to keep it. We could say that he worked hard to find it. For example, he had to move a heavy bookcase to find it, 
or he went to a lot of effort to get it. Another reason is that he found it, so it belongs to him. So, because he found it, so technically it belongs to him, not M sharp, or he found it, so he should have it. We also know that he questions her claim to it. For example, he didn't know it was hers, he wasn't 100% sure it was M sharp's. Or we could write that he feels a sense of injustice, or thinks that she's being mean to him. For example, she has no reason to take the game off him, or it wouldn't be fair for him to give it up now. So we need to write two of these reasons to get two marks. Question 40. Edward found a game. How can you tell that there was something strange about the game? Explain two ways using evidence from the text to support your answer. So we need to think, why is the game unusual? How do we know it's not an ordinary game? We need to explain and give evidence from the text to support our explanation. So the points that we can make are 1. That it was hidden, or that the game was in an unusual location, so behind the bookshelf. We could reference the unusual dice of the game. We could talk about M Sharp's unusual or negative reaction to the discovery of the game. Remember, she was quite aggressive, and if it had just been an ordinary game, perhaps she wouldn't have cared so much that Edward had it. We could talk about the unusual or mysterious name of the game, so it's called Albion's Dream, which is unlike the name of most other games. We could say that it was split up, so the dice was found in one part but the rest of the game somewhere else. Or we could talk about Edward's reaction to the game, or M Sharp. So we need to make two of these points, but to get three marks we need to explain at least one of them. So we could write... Because it was hidden behind the shelf and looked like it hadn't been opened. So that's the first point with evidence to support it. Then M Sharp was very angry that he had it in his hands. So that's the third point. Or we could write the dice had some very odd symbols on it that Edward had not seen before on a regular dice. So that's the second point with an explanation. Then, the title of the game seems creepy, is the fourth point. So, for each of our points, we need to pick out something unusual and explain what is strange about it, making clear that we're using evidence from the text to support our opinions. So, well done on completing the paper, and I would say that this third text is very difficult. A lot of the language will be very unfamiliar to you, but notice you can still get the mark for a lot of these questions just by looking carefully at the text and thinking what the question is asking you to do.